Hey everyone, welcome to the channel and I hope you're doing well. If you're new here, what we do on Unfortunate Ends is to cover a variety of things like crime, mysteries, as well as executions. So if you're interested, be sure to stick around. Anyway, let's get into today's case. In the 1970s and 1980s, corruption was widespread within the police force of Sydney and the wider New South Wales area of Australia. When reform of the police system finally occurred, it was inspired by a prostitute and heroin addict, but one who paid a high price to tell her story. This is the case of Sally Ann Huckstep. Sally Ann Huckstep was born in Sydney on the 12th of December 1954 as Sally Ann Show. She came from a middle class Jewish family and attended some good schools when growing up, including Dover Heights High School but her childhood was fractured in many ways. Her sister Deborah, many years later would state that Sally Ann's relationship with her parents was very strained. Her father Jack Crivoshow could not relate to his daughter and her mother was an aloof, distant character. This factor explains to some extent Sally Ann's decision to drop out of school at 17 years of age in 1971. Having left school, Sally Ann also left home and married Brian Huckstep, whose surname she took as her own. Together, the young couple moved to Kalgoorlie in Western Australia, a mid-sized town which largely existed based on the nearby gold mines. Here, Huckstep's descent into a life of crime and drug abuse began. Her new husband was a heroin addict, and he soon convinced his new bride to begin engaging in prostitution to pay for his habit. Her sister Deborah later noted that Sally Ann's tragedy was due to a variety of factors. For example, she was very attractive, but also possessed a peculiar mix of being vulnerable while also presenting a hardened image to the world. Within months at Kalgoorlie, she had started using heroin herself and it was her drug use and the circle she was moving in, which would soon bring her into contact with Warren Lanfranchi and the Sydney Underworld, an association which would have enormous consequences for her, and indeed for the New South Wales Police Service for many years to come. By the late 1970s, Huckstep had returned to her native Sydney and was continuing to work as a prostitute to feed her heroin habit. Having left her husband in 1981, she met and began a relationship with Warren Lamfranchi, a notorious heroin dealer based in the King's Cross district of Sydney and a mid-level criminal in the city's underworld. By this time, Huckstep herself had a lengthy criminal record. She had been arrested over 30 times for prostitution before it was decriminalised in New South Wales in 1979 and also had several other convictions for drug possession. In the course of the summer of 1981, Sally Ann's relationship with Lam Franke would lead her into a scenario which would dominate the rest of her life. Lam Franke worked with a notorious Sydney criminal, Arthur Stanley Smith, better known as Nettie Smith. Standing at an imposing 6 foot 6 inches and having spent the majority of the 1960s and 1970s in jail for various crimes. Smith was well known to police and had connections within a Sydney police department in which corruption was rife by the early 1980s. Accordingly, when Lamfranchi botched a robbery of a rival Sydney heroin dealer in June 1981 in an incident which had subsequently seen him opening fire on a Sydney policeman, Lamfranchi turned to Smith to see if he could organise a situation where Lamfranchi paid the cops off to make the case disappear. Smith stated that he would, and it was here that Roger Rogerson entered the equation. Roger Rogerson was a detective sergeant within the New South Wales Police Force. He was one of the force's most decorated officers, having received several commendations for his bravery and for his service. He had worked in some of the biggest cases of the 1970s and by the early 1980s, 
his reputation was so great that he could get convictions based solely on his testimony of how police interviews had proceeded. In 1980, he had even been awarded the Peter Mitchell Trophy, an award given to an individual working in policing in Australia to acknowledge extraordinary service. But unbeknownst to many at the time, Rogerson was highly corrupt and had deep connections with the Sydney underworld. He used this to profit from criminal activity himself and as part of this, he was a major heroin distributor himself in the city. It was to Rogerson that Smith turned in the summer of 1981 to try to organise a payment from Lanfranchi to make the investigation into the botched robbery disappear. However, rather than organise this, Rogerson showed up to the meeting with Lanfranchi, accompanied by nearly 20 police officers, and instead killed Lanfranchi. He had numerous motives. Rogerson had done business with Lanfranchi in the past, and he was most likely trying to prevent him from disclosing anything about Rogerson's involvement with the criminal underworld by killing him. There was also a possibility that Rogerson had discovered that Lanfranchi had been selling adulterated heroin on the market, which he had gotten from Rogerson. Finally, Lanfranchi had come to the meeting with a $10,000 bribe, which he was preparing to pay Rogerson, and the detective probably pocketed the money after Lanfranchi was killed. Neddy Smith later claimed that Lanfranchi was even trying to extort money from Rogerson to keep silent. But his version of events, coming from a hardened criminal who composed several sensational books on his life, needs to be treated with caution. It has been proven that Smith's revelations were often entirely made up. A subsequent investigation into the incident ruled that Rogerson had been trying to arrest Lanfranchi and he was commended for his bravery. There the matter might have rested had it not been for Sally Ann Huckstep. She knew exactly what Warren had been involved in and why he might have been murdered by Rogerson. A few weeks after Lanfranchi's murder, she visited the New South Wales Police Headquarters in Sydney and made a statement in which she outlined her belief that Rogerson had killed Lanfranchi in order to steal the 10,000 Australian dollars he was carrying without leaving any loose ends. She also claimed that he had long-standing ties to Nettie Smith and worked with him. However, her allegations went well beyond the specific incident surrounding Warren Lanfranchi's murder. Huckstep also claimed that she had been involved in making illegal payments to members of the New South Wales Vice Squad for several years, and her immersion in the Sydney criminal underworld had convinced her that corruption was endemic in the New South Wales Police Service, and that police officers such as Rogerson were actually facilitating the very kinds of crime which they were supposed to be preventing. Huckstep went further in the days and weeks that followed, going to the papers and giving numerous interviews in which she broadcast her accusations. One of these was on 60 Minutes Australia, a popular current affairs program which garnered widespread attention across the country. Her accusations were extremely sensational at the time, particularly in implicating Rogerson, a highly decorated and admired detective. Initially, no further action was taken against him, but Huckstep's revelations damaged Rogerson, especially because he had been viewed as a potential appointee as police chief in Sydney. Eventually, the story died down. In the months and years that followed, Sally Ann's life took a considerable shift. She became a journalist and an author, writing for several magazines. Though, she could not kick her heroin habit and started a relationship with David Kelleher, a drug dealer who soon afterwards was arrested for importing more than $2 million worth of heroin into the country. Perhaps it was with the passage of time and the dying down of the case that Huckstep's enemies from the early 1980s 
began to consider retribution years later. Though Rogerson had escaped prosecution following the Lanfranchi murder, his career had dimmed ever since, and by the mid-1980s, he was under investigation for misconduct. He had every reason to try and seek revenge against Huckstep. On the evening of the 6th of February, 1986, shortly before 11pm, Sally Ann was at home in her apartment in Edgecliff, when she received a phone call from Warren Richards, a known associate of Roger Rogerson. After a brief conversation, she told her housemate, Gwen Beecroft, that she would be back in 5 or 10 minutes. It was the last time she was seen alive. The following morning at 8.45am, her body was found face down in Busby Pond, in Centennial Park in Sydney. She had been strangled and drowned. An investigation followed into her death, and there were some obvious suspects, chief amongst them being Roger Rogerson and Neddy Smith. At the time, Smith was interviewed and presented an alibi that he was at home with his wife, However, several years later, he was recorded in prison confessing to the crime. Yet as with much else that Smith said over the years, this needs to be treated with suspicion. Well, he returned to jail in 1987 on an unrelated charge, and he was always keen to sensationalise his life to sell his books. The most likely explanation is that Rogerson hired three individuals to murder Huckstep on the night in question. Yet these have never been brought to justice, and subsequent investigations by John Dale, who conducted extensive research into the topic, suggest that the three individuals remain at large. Despite her murder, Huckstep was posthumously vindicated in everything she had claimed and written about between 1981 and her death in 1986. Firstly, her revelations contributed to a growing swell of information on corruption within the New South Wales Police Department and their role in organised crime, which even extended into politics and the judiciary. As these matters were cast more into the public sphere, to a considerable degree owing to Sally Ann's relentless efforts to expose the truth, there was a growing support in the late 1980s and into the early 1990s for an official commission of investigation to be set up. This resulted in the establishment in 1995 of the Royal Commission into the New South Wales Police Service, or the Wood Royal Commission, as it was also known after its Chief Commissioner, James Rowland Wood. This discovered, based on evidence gathered throughout the 1980s and 1990s, that the New South Wales Police were heavily involved in bribery, money laundering, drug trafficking, the fabrication and or destruction of evidence, and fraud. Wood concluded that, rather than being an exception, this kind of misconduct was considered normal within the New South Wales Police. As a result, hundreds of police officers were forced to resign, and some faced criminal charges in the mid to late 1990s. Thus, a decade after her death, Sally Ann Huckstep's accusations were vindicated, and the Sydney Police Service was finally reformed. But perhaps the most striking result of Huckstep's whistleblowing was the complete fall from grace of Roger Rogerson, the man who had killed Lam Frankie in 1981, and who probably ordered Huckstep's murder in 1986. In April 1986, just weeks after Sally Ann's murder, Rogerson was dismissed from the New South Wales Police Service as a result of an accumulation of incidents in which he was adjudged to have acted inappropriately. He was subsequently convicted for having 110,000 Australian dollars in a bank account under a false name, and he was sentenced to nine months in prison in 1990. A further three-year sentence for various crimes followed in the early 1990s. But it didn't stop there. In 2005, he was convicted of lying to the Wood Commission in the late 1990s, and received a further 12-month sentence. Finally, in September 2016, Rogerson was sentenced to life in prison 
for the murder of a Sydney student, Jamie Gow, who had been killed in a botched drug deal. Thus, 35 years after Huckstep first made her allegations against him, Roger Rogerson received a sentence for committing murder. The end of a long process whereby his double life as a police detective and a criminal was revealed. Thank you so much everyone for watching this video on Sally Ann Huckstep. I hope you found the case interesting and let me know what you thought of it down below in the comments. If you have any suggestions, be sure to leave them down in the comments or there's links to my email and Instagram in the description. I hope you have notifications turned on so you got all my videos as soon as I upload them. Anyway, that's all from me, so I'll see all of you in the next unfortunate end. Thanks.